Hey, I've got a quick video here I wanted to share. Um, I'm answering a question for actually uh, Pam from one of the Infusionsoft Facebook groups. And I realized that this is something that a lot of people struggle with. So maybe having a quick resource to reference would be useful. Her question was, um, if I clone a campaign, how do I switch the old one to the new one, right? If I make that new version or make those edits. So uh, there's a little bit of a disconnect there because when you clone a campaign, what it's actually doing is just making a duplicate of exactly the structure you have. But all of the campaign elements, the sequences, the forms, uh, the emails, they're all going to be a brand new or different version that just looks like what you created. So you can see I've got people in this campaign, one here and two in each of these, right? And basically what I'm doing is they're filling out a form and then I'm emailing them and then old people go here and the newer customers go here and I try to sell them two different products, right? So if you're gonna clone a campaign like this, let's go ahead and do make a copy and we'll just call this Pam test two and we'll click save. What it does is it takes exactly that structure and it just duplicates it, but it's totally detached. So the things that are in here have nothing to do with the uh, previous campaign. If I make changes in here and I say, you know what, instead of treating them differently, I wanna just say, uh, sell them anything, right? So it's no longer bought A, uh, it's no longer old customers, it's just customers, right? If I just wanna streamline things a little bit, um, I can go through and move all of these back to draft, and there's actually not anything in these sequences, but I can move everything back to draft and when I publish this campaign, um, we're not gonna see any impact on the other campaign. Now, Pam's question was, do I have to go then replace the form on my website, right? So now I've got Pam test and Pam test two, right? Uh, well, you do. So if you want to take the web form that was capturing leads and have it trigger the Pam test two campaign, um, there's two ways to do it. The cleanest way, probably the easiest way, is to just go in here to this web form um, and publish it. So move it from draft to ready. Uh, you're gonna go back here and you're gonna publish it. And you do need to publish your campaigns before you grab the code for that web form because that's what updates the uh, HTML. So if you've made any changes to that HTML, that's what does it for you. If you're using the JavaScript version, uh, it doesn't matter what order you do it in, but just remember that the uh, JavaScript won't reflect the current version of the form until you've published it. Now, if you wanna get technical with it, uh, if you look at these, um, at the code here, you'll see at a certain ways down, there are hidden Infusionsoft fields that contain uh, data about this form, uh, things that are unique to this form. Oops, let's actually look at the unstyled. So you can see um, right here, we've got the Infusionsoft form XID number. And this value is specific to, it's not even form ABC because that's what the other one was called, but it's specific to this form here in PAM test two, new form. So if somebody fills out that other form, they're gonna go into PAM test one, right? So that's why it's important to switch this form or the code with wherever you're hosting it. Now, if you're not a technical person or you're not a, you don't have access to the back end of your website, if that's not something that you can easily do, um, if you want to continue using that original form, if you've already made the changes to it or done some custom stuff to it after you generated the code, what you could do is just detach this. So this section will continue to run for those people that are in there. And what we would do is when somebody fills this out, I'll say send to Pam2, right? And the way that I'll do that is by applying a tag. So I can just add my Pam2, right? Pam to trigger tag, and I'll go ahead and create that, and I uh, use a test tags category that's just to remind me to delete it later. Um, so I would probably put a goal on the end of this as well, just to kind of keep it all neat and tidy, sent to Pam to, and if you can hear my dog, he's digging into his bed next to me here, I apologize for that. Um, and of course, as soon as I mention him, he stops being adorable. So send to Pam2, Pam2 trigger tag. So this one, uh, basically all we're doing is taking the people who submit that form and applying a tag to them. And you're probably already guessing where we're going next, um, but we're gonna go to the Pam2 campaign. 
And instead of starting this campaign with people filling out a form, uh, we're just going to change that entry point to be looking for a tag. And when they get that tag from, from PAM1, when they get that tag from that other campaign, they'll be fired off into here. So new people who come in through that form are going to be tagged, and then they'll jump to this PAM2 campaign, and they'll experience the new structure of the campaign we've designed. So when you clone campaigns, when you make copies of them, it's making a totally independent version. But if you do need to link them together, right, the initial form and the new structure, uh, you can do that by using tags to jump them. And something like this, I would just let those contacts finish out where they're at. If you felt really strongly about it, you could grab that group and say, hey, I want to you know, start, stop this sequence and I want to start them into the other campaign, PAM2. So you could do that. I've got a whole YouTube video about that one as well. Uh, but for the time being, I think that gives you what you're looking for, PAM. If you have any follow-up questions or if this triggers something else, uh, feel free to let me know and I'll see if I can help.